In this video, we're going to set up a reflection exercise so that students can observe some of the basic properties of reflections. So I start by going to insert my image with my insert image tool. I click where I want to make the insertion of the image, click my screenshot there, and I have my image. Then I'm going to set points as the corners of this image, A and B, by clicking on the lower left and right hand corner. Select my image, hit Ctrl or Command E, and I tell the program make corner one point A and corner two point B. And now the picture can be resized and moved by moving points A and B. Now what I want to do is set up a line that I can reflect the image off of through two points. So let's say we have a line C and D. Now what I can do is reflect this image off of the line. So click my image and I can reflect the object off of that line right there. Now what I also might want to do is of course reflect my points. So A and A prime, B and B prime, and so forth. But I might also want points C and D up here to reflect to really observe some of the properties right, of reflections. Because right now I have a nice setup but I really only have two corners. What if I also want the corners up here, the corners for C and D. So now I need to set up um, and use the parallel line tool by setting up the other corners of this shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is add one more corner onto my image. Right, I want to add an upper right corner. Click my point tool. Click the upper left hand corner. Click the image and set that point to a corner of the image. Now I get my line segment tool. I want to create some line segments from A to B and segment A E. And now I have my parallel line tool up here and I want to create a line that's parallel to AB through point E. So they tell you right here, select the point E and parallel line. And there's my line. And then I want uh, a line that's parallel to AE. So I select point B parallel to line AE and I get that. Now I want the intersection of these two lines to get my fourth corner. Line and line and there's point F. Now you might not want all these lines here because you might not like the way it looks. So over here you can hide those lines to clean up the way your image looks and the way this looks right here. So I have a line A, oops, line B, oh, line A, <laughs> and down here you see line D and E. So I'm going to get rid of D and E, and now it's a little bit cleaner. The lines are there, they're just they're hidden, right? We don't have to see the, the parallel lines. And now, of course, I can move my shape around, but I also want to reflect points E and F. So I get this image over here. So how do I do that? Well, I have this tool, remember. I want to reflect point E about this line and F about that line. So we use those parallel lines to find point F and F prime. And now I basically have everything I need to move this object around and reflect it. Um, but you can go a step further with your students by creating line segments that connect points in their corresponding match. But oops, I don't want that line tool, I want the line segment tool. So I make a line from B to B prime, from A to A prime, from E to E prime, and from F to F prime. And then, of course, I can color code these things. I could make point A and A prime blue, and then I can click the line, oops, and make that blue as well. You know, you can, of course, you just double click to get your object properties. Color, blue, and so forth. And then you can start matching these up. Like maybe point B, right? Point B, the line, and B prime. Here, I could change the color and make them all red or pink or something. And you can see that as well. And if you click the line, notice I can go to my object properties and then here you can scroll through the objects you want to select instead of you know do them one at a time. So I might click E, right? E prime. And then the line segment that connects E and E prime, right? And you can scroll through to see what these are. And that happens to be line segment H, it tells you it's from E to E prime. And maybe I want these green, right? 
The point is, you can set this up so students can easily identify what matches. And it seemed to have lost the segment there, so let me reconnect that, f and f prime. So what you can look at with the students is the angle um, between right, these lines and the line of reflection. So of course there's lots of ways to do this. One thing you can look at is the intersection of each line, right? So you click the lines here and here, and you get these points to show where they intersect the reflection line, and then you can just measure that angle for each of them. So I could I could ask it to measure angle C G E and C G E prime. Notice there it shows 270. If you don't like that order, you can switch it. So E prime, G, and C. And then F, H, C, F, H, C, oops, F, C, H, F, and so forth. And now, what you, I mean, without even really saying much, of course, I think students quickly can observe what's happening here. Oops, sorry, saying this up. Incorrectly, it doesn't matter in which order you click your points for your angles. And last one. Oops, that's not possible. I seem to be selecting point D by accident. I'll fix that in a moment. Let me just move my shape here and you can see. Okay, so sorry. C, J, B, and B prime, J, and C. And you can immediately observe that no matter how we reflect this shape, I can't drag point F to, to alter the shape. It's not one of the established corners of the shape. But here, notice no matter how I drag the picture around and how it reflects, students can observe that 90 degree angle. right? And you could even get the bottom angles to see um, here, for example, F H, I think that is, and another point, see the bottom half here, the complementary, excuse me, supplementary angle of 90 degrees. So that's one way to elicit what's happening here.